so I have upgraded just a touch. This is still this is still Jeep, but I've upgraded just a touch my audio setup here. And I am gonna be working on it further because I'm about to move, like move to a new non-disclosed city. Um, I'm not running from anything, no worries. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm about to move, and so I'm finally going to have, I've been holding off on improving my technical setup and my set and audio and everything because we've, we've had this move on the horizon. We've been looking for a place, and so finally it's, it's happening, and we are moving, and so I can finally, after this, get serious in another few weeks, a month, after, right after the holidays, I can get serious about a professional set. And so I do appreciate those of you who have contributed, and not with even the expectation that I would do anything, with, with, in particular with your money, but uh, have, have tipped or contributed or joined Patreon or PayPal or whatever, and I appreciate that support. And, and, and now, you know, over the next uh, few months, you're going to see that hopefully my setup will be of a pr more professional nature. Uh, because I have had people tell me that that is something that I do need to up my game about. And I, I totally agree. It's just, as I've said before, when I started my YouTube channel, I thought that it was, I underestimated how many people were interested in the Johnny Depp stuff. And then also in, in this, the celebrity uh, cases, controversies in general, and I thought that it would take me pro at least a year to get monetized and to get a thousand subscribers, at least a year, and 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 instead it happened in a month, and thank you all so much for that, and and so I wasn't prepared for it, and had you know a job and actually two jobs at one point, and things going on in my life, and just just a lot of stuff, so. You know, understand that even though I look really, I, I think to a degree I look pretty polished and all together when I'm in front of the camera. Some people might say, yeah, right, who are you fooling? But, uh, but to some people I may look that way. But as with, I think, a lot of us, the reality um, at times, you know, the last, the last couple of years have been difficult years. But I feel like... I feel like I'm on an upward swing and everything, and I just, and not to be cryptic or anything, or nothing horrible, you know, happened or whatever, but I'm just saying that, especially with, like, job transition and, and things in my personal life, that it's been a challenge, and this YouTube thing has been just a really, a point of, even when it's been difficult at times, it's been a real point of light, a source of light and uh, meaning and fulfillment or whatever in my life to be able to share things with people. So, anyway, that's a long, rambling message, but I just wanted to say Thank you to my viewers and to everybody, and uh, I, I, I hope and think that we have good things ahead. All right, so several topics I want to talk about today. I have not talked about, it's been a couple of videos since I talked about the Marilyn Manson situation, and I do know that Ilma Gore uh, filed in a response to Marilyn Manson that Southern Law said was really compelling in a number of ways. And, you know, obviously that alarms me a bit. Not that I am in any way doubtful of Marilyn Manson's innocence because I've just looked into this too much and been with it for too long. And I just, I just know as much as I'm capable of knowing, you know, 90 something percent or whatever that he is innocent. But Marilyn Manson needs, in my opinion, he really does need a trial um, so that his allegations can come out and can get public attention. Yeah, he, I think he needs that. Now, am I being doom and gloom and dour and, and fatalistic? Do I think that if he doesn't get this trial or if, you know, through the anti-slap stuff, if he gets a bad anti-slap ruling and in certain elements he won't be able to present, uh, as I understand it, by the way, from Southern Law, talking to Southern Law, and we're going to talk more about this later in the week, even if Manson does not prevail when it comes to the anti-slap ruling, like he can still go forward with major chunks of his case, right? And that's why Andrea Burkhardt, attorney Andrea Bur Burkhardt, said in an interview on my channel, you know, months ago, it's a great interview, look it up, that uh, she felt like the Manson's lawyers had done a really good job making his lawsuit against Ilma Gore and Evan Rachel Wood um, slap proof. And if people are wondering what the anti-slap thing is, it's just basically, it's, it's, it's a law in, I think, almost all states, maybe except for Virginia. Is that why Johnny, I think that's why Johnny Depp, right, his team, that's one of the reasons why they chose Virginia. 
to go after uh, Amber Heard, and, and rightfully so, but it's because either they didn't have an anti-slap law there, or they didn't, um, or it wasn't as, it was had a loophole, or it wasn't as uh, tightly enforced or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, the point is, uh, these, these anti-slap rules or laws are there to safeguard free speech, particularly on the part of supposed victims who are coming forward to talk about their supposed abuse. And, but, it's, but it's a larger issue of free speech and stuff like that, right? And I'm certainly a proponent of free speech and everything. And I understand that people have a certain degree of uneasiness, intellectual or, other, or otherwise, with, for instance, Johnny Depp being able to sue, successfully sue Amber Heard for defamation. You know, there are a number of people who think that free speech should be sacrosanct, even protecting lies. And that's a whole other argument. I, I do think it's more complicated than that. And I, I do think that it was right that Amber Heard was sued and that Marilyn Manson is able to sue, um, not just for defamation, but a number of other, other things. All right. And, and just again, you know, there was, uh, there was basically a computer um, tampering and basically hacking and proper use of passwords and so forth to make it seem that Marilyn Manson was sending illicit, you know, illegal, probably pornography to people, which he absolutely was not and did not have. And, uh, you know, again, it's important to understand that the L.A. Sheriff's Department, long time ago, okay, months and months and months ago, maybe more, it's all starting to run together now, but that they seized all of his devices. They, quote, raided his home. It was widely reported. They seized all of his devices and everything. And so they're very well aware of any and everything that Marilyn Manson has ever looked at on his computer or been into and any of his electronic devices. And guess what? They declined to file charges and they... <laughs> They passed along their files to the L.A. District Attorney, George Gascon, in which they did apparently did not recommend charges against Manson. That there was no evidence, okay? It seems very clear that the LASD did, and talked about this before, they did a full and thorough investigation and they found nothing. And now it seems that the, and that was the, I'm sorry, the LA Sheriff's Department. And then now it seems that the LA District Attorney is, for political reasons, sitting on that because he doesn't want to come out and say, oh, we're not going to charge this man because there's no evidence. In fact, there's actually a lot of evidence that it's a hoax. That if anybody should be charged, you know, maybe it should be the people who were generating false FBI letters, who were actually fabricating FBI letters, putting the names of a real agent on there, but under false circumstances. Blatantly <laughs> yucky behavior. Blatantly. Just untenable behavior. Anyway, maybe those people should be worried about legal stuff. But not Manson. So no charges are coming to Manson, right? But despite the fact that Evan Rachel Wood and Ilma Gore were recruiting women using his, the information that they got, you know, his passwords and his contacts and all of that, recruiting women, disgruntled women, just not very many, but some, a few, a handful compared to all the women he's known, recruiting these disgruntled women to go after him. And so, and so you know, a whole, a whole list of things that these two, Evan Rachel Wood and Ilma Gore, instigated. And they are the root of the problem that Manson has now. And these, all, these other things, you know, several other lawsuits against him and being canceled and all these other complications emanated from Evan Rachel Wood and Ilma Gore perpetuating this hoax that had multiple facets. And he's suing for some of those, not just for defamation. But yes, he needs a trial. I think he needs something that will force, he needs something that will force the media, the big media with a big M, to cover this. And I know that we like to say that the big media aren't important, and they aren't important in the sense that we don't have to or need to listen to what they say. But at the same time, they do still have unfortunately, enormous influence and certainly more influence than what I have, for instance. And I'm not bemoaning my position in the food chain. I'm just saying that, you know, I wish that when I made a video talking about the stuff I talk about, I wish that it would get greater coverage or I wish that it would, I wish that it would virally spread more. But you can only grow as fast as you can grow on YouTube, right? Anyway, my point is, I wish, you know, unrelated to my channel, like, I, I wish that Manson, I wish that his side could get fair 
larger coverage. And I know people say, well, he can do an interview. Yeah, you know, and, and maybe after this legal stuff, but I've talked to Southern Law, for instance, and, and Andrea Burkhart, right, earlier on. And I do think, based on my conversations with them, that some of Manson's allegations at least will go forward into a trial. And so I, I, I hope that he does get a lot of coverage, and I don't count on the media to be perfectly fair or anything, but I do think that in a trial, they're almost going to be forced to to at least cover the big stuff. And I think the big stuff is still like, even if they don't, even if people don't hear everything, I think the big elements are very telling. I, I, I think, I think it'll be really helpful to Manson. And I think that can be then a real start to his rehabilitation in the public mind. Um, rehabilitation, I, in the sense, not that people are going to think he's this squeaky clean, you know, just awesome guy, because people, you know, never thought that. <laughs> Part of his brand and self-promotion was this idea that he was this, you know, disturbed, edgy individual. But that people would would start coming around to the idea that he is not a predator and not an abuser, and that this was a hoax perpetuated by particularly Evan Rachel Wood, a disturbed Evan Rachel Wood, and an opportunistic Il McGore, and then a mix of disturbed and or opportunistic women that they got to come in on them, you know, with, with all of this stuff. Like Esme Bianco, right? She's suing him for millions of dollars. You know, they're getting these photos. I've talked about this before on my channel. They're getting these big photo spreads and all of, all of this stuff and these, you know, cover stories of People Magazine and whatever, right? It is not these things, these allegations have not been without their rewards. So I think, though, that people should hear about this or should read about this. And so I, I very much hope that Manson gets his day in court. And I wish to God, I wish that, you know, I could make this happen somehow just by praying about it. If this trial could only be te televised, you know, it made such a difference. We saw the difference that it made with the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing. I don't hold out great hope that it will be, you know, like a lot of the trials are not, I'm seeing in California along these lines, some of these other Me Too trials uh, against people that, that do have more credibility, I think, right? But, but I, I see that they're not being televised, so I don't know. I guess we just got really, really lucky and the gods smiled on us when it came to Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. And, and that was great because it taught a real lesson to a lot of people and it, it made a lot of people hip to something that had been going on that they were not aware of in terms of these false allegations and these Me Too hit jobs and the fact that when the media get onto a narrative, particularly in these types of scenarios, these Me Too claims, that very, very quickly things can become very skewed and that people, there's a whole narrative that's created in the, in the public mind that actually may be very, very false. And people just, just can't even conceive of it because of what they're being fed in the media and in these carefully crafted documentaries, you know, like Phoenix Rising, that seem compelling, but that in fact are full of blatant lies and misrepresentations and huge logical fallacies and just at times just ridiculousness. And again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at my playlist on the Marilyn Manson situation. I've got it all there. And so anyway... Yeah, so I uh, I think that it's going to be interesting. We are finally starting to get into the main race now. I, I do believe that the public are just not aware of the extent of this hoax against him and all that it involved by Evan Rachel Wood and Ilma Gore. A lot of people don't even know who Ilma Gore is, much less the role, the central role, foundational role that she played in this. And I think that when you put Ilma Gore into the picture, or when people are made aware of Ilma Gore as a central part of this story, as Evan Rachel Wood's co-conspirator and also her ex-girlfriend at the time, or girlfriend at the time, ex-girlfriend now, I think that it makes a lot more sense to people how and why it is that Evan Rachel Wood would have gotten into this thing to begin with, would have perpetuated of this hoax against Marilyn Manson. And so I do think that, and again, if you wonder, well, what story is that? Who is Ilma Gorge? You're coming to this fresh. Again, watch my videos. Look at my channel. And the first video that I have pinned at the top of my channel is a primer on my position on the situation, this Marilyn Manson case. But I do think that the public at large, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, the public at large, they don't know about this case, or they don't know the extensive details. And I think that the more that people know 
about this case, then the more they either side with Manson or the more that they are willing to give him at least the proper benefit of the doubt that he should have had to begin with instead of getting canceled like he was and made into this, you know, this societal pariah and like a real pariah this time, not what he was, you know, pretending to be (laughs) in the late nineties and and beyond. You know, recently I was lucky enough to be invited on the Sean Atwood show, Atwood Unleashed. And of course, if you know who Sean Atwood is, he's a bit of a celebrity. He was referred to as the real Walter White at one point because he was running as a British guy, but he was running such a huge drug trafficking operation in the United States. Well, anyway, He went to prison and he served his time and now he has a very successful podcast with 700,000 subscribers. And so he asked me to be on his show to come on for a short 30 minute segment and talk about the Marilyn Manson situation. And so it was a great opportunity for me and I wanted to make it count. And, you know, it was a big show and I was following up Chris Hansen. (laughs) There's my career high point so far is is that I'm in the same league as uh, Chris Hansen apparently. Um, anyway, here's what's interesting though. Okay. Most of the people, the vast majority of people in the live stream audience, uh, thought Manson was guilty. Sean polled them before I started talking and the vast majority said that Manson was guilty. They believe Manson was guilty. After I talked about the case for 20 minutes, just a basic introduction to the reality of the case and Ilma Gore, just explaining who Ilma Gore is and how she fits in with this. You know, she's such a nefarious, unappealing character, right? You don't really have to say a whole lot. You just explain her and then how she's connected and she's like part mastermind of this thing. Anyway, I went through it for 20 minutes. And after that, 20, 25 minutes and after that, Sean polled them again, the live stream audience, and most of them now believe that Manson was innocent. And that is not a testimony uh, to my great debating skills, all right? It's just that when you actually lay out the situation, people have a great deal of common sense. They have a great deal of common sense on these types of issues. They can see that Me Too has gone too far. There's been an overcorrection. And so when you present the facts of, of this situation and you explain who Ilma Gore is and you explain how all this came to be, and then you call people's attention to the underlying media and socio-cultural political dynamics of this, people get it. So I do think it's going to be a tough legal battle. And then just with even like the aftermath and this larger story, you know, like this, this trajectory that he's on, I do think that things are going to, going to get better over time. But like this this is tough. And, and, and it's tough to get the truth out there. And I feel like those of us who are fighting for the truth, I feel like our adversaries are, are very tough. I mean, Evan Rachel Wood, she, I don't know if she believes what she's saying, or she doesn't believe what she's saying, or she's crazy, or she's crazy like a fox, or I don't know. But, but I, I, I do think that, you know, she's a great actress. And I, and I think very good, knowingly or unknowingly, And I just want to bring up something of concern, and I don't know really how to talk about this without sounding perhaps condescending or sanctimonious or whatever, and so, but I I am just going to say it, and I hope that people will understand that I'm not just talking to other people, but that I am actually, like, including myself in this as somebody who has learned a lesson or needs to learn lessons. I, I do think that there are a number of disputes that have occurred between proponents of Marilyn Manson's innocence, those of us who believe in Marilyn Manson's innocence and, and have been in, in various ways promoting that idea. I know that there have been, and that I've been a part of a number of disputes and disagreements, you know, nothing, I'm not saying anything like, like horrible or whatever. And I mean, I'm just saying like the stuff that happens when people are, when people are um, supporting a particular cause, there are fissures that open up at times and misunderstandings. And God knows that we all make mistakes because none of us really, and and myself especially, none of us really know what we're doing. And again, like I started this YouTube channel, I I didn't even know that it would, that it would be as big as it has, as it has gotten, you know, and it's not saying it's really huge or anything, but I'm just saying like, it, it has taken me by surprise 
And so of course there's, there's stuff that I don't know or that I don't know how to handle or that I'm awkward about, or I look back and I'm like, uh, and I'm sure that's true for everybody else who has been out there, um, who's been out there basically fighting for the truth on this. And so I guess what I want to say is I, I know that, I know that a lot of, I know that a number of people have developed issues with, at times with other people. And I know that to some degree, everybody, including me, feels like some other people have kind of, you know, dragged them through the, the mud or, or whatever you want to say, right? Kind of like publicly in some way criticize them or, or whatever. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I think everybody feels not everybody, but I think a number of people who have been at this for a long time, like sometimes we, 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 we fuck up or we slip up or sometimes we get misunderstood or we misunderstand someone else or we're just stressed out or under pressure. We get, and we're getting attacked from people and we have all of these different like things coming at us at times, you know, whether it's attacks or requests or things that we're worried about, we're trying to balance. And, and again, you know, we don't really know what we're doing. We're just going on gut instinct. Right. And sometimes like (laughs) stress hormones, (laughs) So anyway, here's what I, what I want to say, and I'm not referring here to any like recent disputes that anyone's having with anyone. I'm not weighing in on anything. You know, I'm not telling anyone what to do. Again, the last thing I want to do is come off of condescending and sanctimonious and all that. So let me, but let me just say like, um, for whatever I have, for in whatever ways I have fucked up in regard to anybody, I do apologize and I'm sure that there are certain ways that I, since I fuck up in every relationship, it's to some degree that I have because I'm human. I'm sure that there are things that I messed up on with some of the people who've had some issues with me over the past months or whatever, right? And so I apologize to those people. I apologize. And, I, and, and, and I'm not just doing that to like slavishly, like there's no point apologizing, okay? Like everybody's kind of moved on from that anyway, right? But I'm just saying that like, I think a number of us, we've kind of reached out to each other. We've, we're moving on. Okay. And, and here's, here's just what I want to say going forward is Marilyn Manson is facing a, a, a tough battle in front of him. And Ilma Gore, you know, I laugh at her at times as being, you know, incompetent or whatever, but you know, she did help to orchestrate this major hoax. that's taken this huge rock star down and whatever. And she's, I know she's, she's been crafty in a number of ways and whatever. Like, I'm just saying like this, you know, this, this thing in front of Manson and those of us who are fighting for the truth, it is about to start getting more intense. And I don't know what the judge's disposition or the jury's disposition toward Manson is going to be. Uh, but I do think that it's a time to be for all of us to be really like focused. And I'm not saying that it's it's bad to be upset with people who might have mistreated you or or I, it's I'm, and I know it's inevitable that there will be fissures within the group and everything. But I do I do want to I, I do want to say that one of my here I am about to get pretentious and condescending here. I'm gonna start talking about ancient Roman history, <laughs> but I am a history buff. And one of the stories uh, that I think, and who knows if it's apocryphal or, or really happened or not, right? Like this stuff happened so long ago, who knows what's real and what's not. But one of the interesting stories that I love from Roman antiquity is the story of Caesar and what Caesar, Julius Caesar does when he comes into Rome, when he takes over Rome. Because if you know anything about Roman history, like Caesar, there was this division that had opened up between Julius Caesar, Roman general, politician, and the other Roman leaders in the Roman Senate. And they told him he was away at war and he had just won a bunch of uh, mil- a big military campaign in Gaul. And he was like really famous and people loved him and everything. But, but the, the Roman Senate is freaked out about Caesar. And so they tell him, you cannot cross the Rubicon River. You cannot basically bring your troops and your troops who are loyal to you into Rome, because that would be seen as basically an act of, uh, to them, of Caesar coming in and taking control of, of Rome. And he had a lot of enemies, understandably, and there were a lot of people who didn't like him or didn't support him and thought that it was kind of a big power grab, you know, an unseemly power grab that he was engaged in and everything. Well, so what happens is Caesar does cross the Rubicon and the Roman Senate and uh, a number of people, a number of enemies of, of his and some of the Roman Senate, they flee. But then some of his enemies uh, stay and some people who had been hostile to him stay. 
So you have some of his enemies have fled, some are still there, but but Caesar, he, he enters Rome, and after a bit, he convenes a, a meeting, and he says to them that his policy is going to be that anyone who was against him, any in to, to a small degree, to a large degree, anyone that he had had disputes with, anyone who had not been a fan of his, you know, whatever, that he was providing, he was providing absolution for that. He was providing a clemency or what have you, pardon. That he was going to pardon those people if they would agree from that point on to support him. And so rather than what people expected, which is that he was going to march into Rome and he was going to set about to start slaughtering his enemies and people who had not been on his side and whatever, instead he says very magnanimously and very shrewdly, he says, look, past stuff is forgotten, wiped away, whatever the issues were, if, if you greet me warmly now, if you greet me with open arms now, from this time forward, we work together, the past is forgotten. And so that's going to be my feeling going forward. And that's a feeling that for some reason now that we're, that the trial to me is, is in sight, even if we don't have a specific date. But to me now that I do feel like we're starting to get into, uh, as Churchill might have said, not uh, the end, but the beginning of the end, right? Or was the end the beginning? Oh gosh, I can't remember. I'm as bad as Amber Heard right now when she was trying to uh, quote Churchill and her little, <laughs> her little sparring match with Adam Waldman. And anyway, she tried to quote Churchill and it came off about as badly as you'd expect it to come off Amber Heard trying to quote Winston Churchill. But I'm just saying to, to anybody on the spectrum of people who have had you know, some bad interactions with me or disliked me a little or disliked me a lot or I've had major issues or whatever, right? Even the person who was spreading the rumor that I had Marilyn Manson robbed to pay for my heroin habit. <laughs> yes, that really was a story that someone was shopping, was trying to shop around on some channels and actually approached uh, several channel hosts I've heard uh, with this uh, story. And so I just want to assure you, no, no, um, no heroin habit. And by the way, I, I don't even like know who these people are like, they're not, they're not any of the main players or the main pages or anything like that. Right. So let's start and <laughs> not start new rumors here. But, and no, I, I did not rob Marilyn Manson because you can bet your bottom dollar. If I had robbed Marilyn Manson or had Marilyn Manson robbed, I would have taken that fucking John Wayne Gacy painting because I want that. And I just want Marilyn Manson to know, Manson, that if I rob you, I'm going to take that fucking John Wayne Gacy painting because I want that thing. And you will know if I robbed you because it will be gone. All right. On that note, everybody, um, open arms. I love everybody. Let's, you know, onward Christian soldiers marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banner go. And that is the vibe that we need to have going forward, damn it. That is the vibe. And that is the vibe, my fellow motherfuckers, that, uh, that I'm going to have. All right? And because we know that we got the truth on our side. All right? Whatever we have to go through, whatever legal battles or whatever media representations or whatever interior squabbles that we have with each other, right? And the ways that we fuck up or other people fuck up or whatever, all right? From here on, I declare a period of clemency and pardon and we move forward together in battle, all right? As always, like, subscribe. All of my links are below. Appreciate your support. And I got a lot of stuff coming out this week on my Patreon. To my Patreon people, I'm sorry. I've been, I've been slow. I'm working on something really cool, but I am going to speed it up. So, But everybody, love you all. Bye-bye.